This video may contain offensive language or be frightening to some viewers. Viewer discretion is recommended. Jason the Toy Maker. I don't have many memories left from my past. The faces of my real parents were like faded masks in my mind. I only had some remains of my childhood. Faceless names and total darkness. At the age of nine, something had happened in my family. The trauma was so deep, it made me forget most of my life. I only had the shred of a memory related to my best friend. He was the only one I had in my whole life. It was an image stuck in my mind, going together with laughter in the background and the melody of a music box. Among the black holes of my amnesia, I caught a glimpse of his honey-coloured eyes and his dark mahogany hair. I remembered his friendly smile, but nothing else. All the rest disappeared in the dark. So did he. The memories went back to the orphanage from where I was born. Some awesome parents, Madalena and Stephen, who gave me back the warm feeling of having a family, adopted me. A feeling which I had forgotten. They raised me in their house until the age of 15. My amnesia led me to go to examinations and psychological checkups, which year after year were slowly starting to fail. It looked like I wouldn't be able to get my memory back. This fact left me distraught. On one hand, I wanted to know what happened, but on the other, an odd feeling of anxiety suggested I not to wish for it. Obviously, there were some unpleasant consequences to my trauma. It was just like some paranoia, or being persecuted by something. The specialists told my parents it must have been linked to a particular memory, which was continuously stimulated. Neither the cause, nor what it was exactly, was clear. But despite my efforts, I couldn't focus on it. I felt like I was being observed, not by people, but by the stuffed toys in my room. It was stupid, I know. At the beginning, they were simply toys, but time and time again, their big round eyes seemed to stare at me. Since I was little, I thought that the stuffed toys in my room were alive, and sometimes I tried to prove it. I sneaked out of my room with the door left ajar, then I turned back suddenly, and I never took my eyes off them. Not until I felt a burning sensation from not blinking my eyes. That memory was one of the few memories from my childhood that still made me smile, but things have changed. Time after time, the stuffed toys were the ones staring at me. It almost looked like they wanted to test me, and I couldn't bear it anymore. The thought stuck in my mind. At times, it seemed to me that they moved turning their little faces towards me. At other times, they made the noises in my room. This couldn't be true, obviously. Why did this thought persecute me? Why did I hate those stuffed toys? In spite of everything, why didn't I get rid of them? 
I could have presented them to other children or thrown them in the rubbish. One day I tried. Really, I did. But when I took one of them in my arms, a strong sense of anxiety and terror stopped me. I always ended up putting them back in their places. On the furniture, on my bed, on the shelves. Then I had to take sleeping pills. There was only one toy I took along with me during the night. Despite my age, I couldn't separate from him, and I felt a familiar affection for him that started long before my amnesia. I found him in my wardrobe at the orphanage, and from there on out, we became inseparable. It was a sweet bunny with ears as long as his body. On one side, it was red, and on the other, resided a caramel colour. He wore a black waistcoat, with two long sleeves that draped down to the point of his feet, and dashed an elegant collar that dawned pointed tips at every edge of the fabric. His little left beaded eye was covered with a stylish frilly eye patch, and at the centre dawned a black button. It was funny, but it looked like the only stuffed toy that was harmless. He slept by my side ever since I was little, just like that night. After I snuck under my sheets, falling asleep almost instantly among the old creaking walls. I was standing still in the darkness, unable to move, and I couldn't understand how I ended up there, surrounded only by the distilled silence. Something slimy grabbed my wrist, and it held me so tightly that an instant pain shot right through me. A set of white nails slowly penetrated my flesh. I watched them cutting through my skin, making me bleed. I screamed and cried, but a laugh bellowed out, covering my desperate pleas. She belongs to me, a voice whispered to me. Within that dark abyss, two green sparkling eyes appeared before me. They were a few inches away from my face. You are only a hindrance to me. He laughed, amused by my pain, while he pierced needles under my nails and into my flesh. He ruined my body with rusty tools. On the contrary, he said he was going to fix me all up. I noticed an open door, the only thing I could distinguish from the darkness. My eyes blurred by the pain. I saw a glimpse of people, standing still, gazing down at me. The image of that door got closer in order to show me their vacant expressions, despite the grimaces plastered on their faces. I saw that they were not real people, they were dolls, and in some way I felt a strong sense of nausea overcome me by just staring at them. There was something about them that made me weak to the stomach, and maybe it was their extraordinary and macabre resemblance to real people. She belongs to me. With that, I woke up, my eyes wide open, and the beating of my heart was so loud that I could feel it pounding inside my throat. I couldn't breathe, so I stood up and sat back down. I rubbed my eyes, and I realised that I was sweating. The bunny fell 
landing upside down. I leaned down for him and put him back on the bed, my breathing returning to normal, but the image of those needles, dirty of blood, and those terrifying dolls remained embedded in my mind. I never had such a nightmare like that before. The feelings were so terribly real. I still felt those claws making a hole in my flesh, but I was relieved that I woke up. The door squeaked. It was my mother coming in the room. As soon as she saw my exhausted face, her smile faded away. Honey, are you okay? Yes, I only had a nightmare. Now everything is alright. Well, okay. Daisy came to visit you. I told her to wait for you in the living room. With that, I got out from bed. I was dressed poorly, and I didn't want my best friend to see me in that way. While my mother closed the door, I ran over to my wardrobe and took out an ordinary dress. In the space of a few minutes, I came out from my room neat and ready. In my haste, I was out of breath. Finally, exclaimed Daisy, smiling. I met Daisy at middle school, and ever since then, we were inseparable. She was a kind and generous person. She was always welcome in our family. My parents appreciated her good manners, but what I loved about her especially was that she never asked me anything about my past. I was able to tell her about my amnesia in complete confidence. The day was nice and sunny, so we laid down in the garden, under an old tupelo tree. We talked while sheltered from the sun in the shade of the tree. I brought out some colour pencils and paper and began drawing. Daisy started picking flowers, putting them in her blonde braid while she gossiped about Louisa a girl who lived for being the centre of people's attention. While my friend was talking, I listened to her and kept on drawing, without taking my eyes off the sheet of paper. Who's that? She asked me suddenly, noticing the drawing. It was as if I had fallen asleep in that exact moment. I battered my eyelids in front of the sheet of paper, and I felt rather confused about seeing a drawing repeated several times of the same character. I don't know. I didn't have the slightest idea of who he was. The clearest drawing showed a man wearing a black jacket with extravagant and voluptuous fur on his shoulders. He had a beautiful smile, and two yellow eyes that were partially covered by his fringe. He wore dark clothing, and in his hands he was holding a little blue case resembling a music box. Maybe I saw him in an illusion book. Oh, okay. Let's have an ice cream, said Daisy, changing the subject of our conversation, seemingly not very interested. Ants are coming under my skirt. There are too many bugs out here. On that same night, I had another nightmare, and this was worse than the previous one I had. I dreamt about the dark figure again, who brutally tortured me and kept saying the same phrase over and over again. She's mine. She's mine. 
I woke up at 2am, breathing rapidly. I curled up, feeling the wall behind my back. I put my hands over my face, and I breathed deeply. It was a dream, just a dream, I whispered. Then I looked over at the bunny next to me, which was looking back at me with its black eye. And with an irritated glance, I threw it on the floor. Since that moment, I started sleeping with that thing. My dreams turned into meaningless nightmares. I turned around to rest my legs, and at that moment, I touched something with my foot. I elevated my gaze and noticed a small doll sitting on my bed. At first I was frozen in place. All I could do was stare at her. I didn't realise how she had appeared there. My mind started to think back to my parents, who gave me a present. Perhaps I didn't have a real thing for dolls, and to tell the truth, her presence in my room bothered me. It was a peculiar doll, made of wax, with unusual characteristics. She had a headdress of flowers flowing through her hair, and only a few locks caressed her cheeks. She wore an embroidered white lace dress, with black ribbon tied to her waist. Her arms were unordinarily long, and she had long, tapering fingers that were far from normal. What caught my attention the most was a rose put at the centre of her mouth, as if it was supposed to silence her. I looked at her closer, and I scanned her under the moonlight. I touched her face, and realised there was something wrong. I kneeled down and tried to get an even closer look at her, and then I heard something, a sort of subdued sound, like a wheeze. It was coming from the same doll, screaming. I let her falling down onto the floor and stood up in horror, trembling violently, pushing myself back to the wall, screaming for my parents. Suddenly everything turned surreal. The wall next to the door enlarged, like there was a bubble between the paint and the cement. Slowly some cracks appeared, and they increased in number. The paint fell into pieces, landing on the floor as it revealed a blue door. I hadn't the slightest idea of what was happening. These things exist only in books, or in our imagination, But to my astonishment, I felt like something was going to come out of that door. And from the door, I see the same black hands that I witnessed in my nightmares. Aren't you happy about Daisy coming to visit you? Are you? Said the monster, standing on the threshold of the door. I didn't like her either, you know. She screamed a lot. Daisy? What had she to do with it? I looked around, confused, looking for the presence of my friend that obviously was not there anymore. At the end, my eyes flickered over the doll. The blonde hair and face made of wax looked strangely familiar. I held my breath. It must have been another nightmare. I rushed over to the doll, and I turned her face in my trembling hands. I put my ear over her chest, and heard another sound along with the horrible wheeze. The pounding of a heart. Daisy! Daisy! I cried desperately. It had to be a nightmare. Something like this could not have been happening. I realised my parents were outside of my room, according to the sounds I heard. 
They must have heard me screaming, but the monster blocked the entrance. He pulled the door shut, blocking it in and deforming the wood. My parents started punching on the other side, and I didn't know what to do. It did not look like a dream. It was all perfectly clear. It was more real than those nightmares of darkness and torture. My heart was beating so fast that I started to feel pain from it. I felt the sweat on my forehead and the doll trembling in my hands, which I couldn't keep still. The monster stood at the entrance, not moving from there. In the half-light, I could see his evil smirk, as if he was waiting for my reaction. I unbuttoned Daisy's dress, who looked imprisoned under the tons of wax, and I started to dig, trying to set her free. I dug, and I dug, and I dug, while her moans became more intense, until I felt something wet under my nails. I looked at my hands, covered with blood. Her skin must have been mixed in with the wax, and the digging I did was not helping her at all. That thing that was supposedly Daisy was suffering. Her wheezes were blood-curdling, but her expression was still that of an impassive doll. I trembled with horror. I had to repress a wretch, and suddenly I felt my arm being grabbed. My splendid Maggie, you've ruined your doll, exclaimed the monster, his whitish eyes sparkling with pale green light. You even threw Mr. Bunny on the floor. But I forgive you. You must return to the place where you belong. By my side. Who the hell are you? I shook like mad, trying to set myself free, while my parents were trying to break down the door. The expression on the creature was filled with astonishment. I am Jason the Toymaker, he exclaimed. Your faithful friend. The only one you could trust. At hearing the name, something moved in my memories, like an electric shock running through my body. At that moment, my father succeeded, breaking down the door and turning on the light. When I finally saw him, his face... It was like a bomb exploded in my mind, setting free all my memories that were buried deep in the corners of my mind for all those years. I remembered the day we met for the first time. The toys that seemed to bloom from his hands. I remembered his friendly smile that gradually turned into a sharp and sadistic smirk. That day he showered me with his exasperation. He expected me to give him more attention because in his arrogance he believed he deserved everything from me. When he grew tired of me, then he showed me what he really was. He revealed he eliminated all of the people who surrounded me in my life. He kidnapped my friends for turning them into his toy dolls, and I was bluntly stupid to always admire them. Rushing home was useless, because the blue door reappeared at the centre of the living room. He massacred my parents. He took his revenge by taking them away from me, and almost got to me too. I managed to escape from his clutches, running as much as I could away from him. As far as I ran, the smell of blood and decomposing flesh lingered in the air. 
It was you! I was possessed by anger, and I started hitting him. You killed them! You! I kept hitting him, but Jason was smiling, as if it were tickling him. He didn't have any remorse for ruining my life. He was a possessive beast who concealed himself from my childish eyes behind an angel's face. He was able to give me everything, and at the same time, to terminate everything around me. He was fiendish. Of course it was me, my splendid creature. Mr. Bunny even showed it to you. He smiled with self-evident truth. I made for you many toys, and I can't wait to introduce you to Miranda. But you can call her Mandy if you like. Suddenly something hit his head, and it shattered into pieces. My father had a wooden club. He aimed a blow at the monster's head, but the one that broke was the wood. Jason's smile turned into an infuriated scowl, and his grip increased on my wrist. He turned around, and when my father saw Jason's face, his eyes opened wide in shock, and my mother covered her mouth to conceal her screams. My father didn't waste any more time, trying again to set me free. The club broke in half, and with that one blow to the toy maker's face, made him let me go. Together with my parents, I ran out from the room. We rushed to the entrance. My father opened the door, but instead of the garden path in front of us, there was Jason's workshop. Maggie. I give you one last chance, Jason said calmly, walking down the stairs. After which, I'll dye the walls with the blood of all the people who surround you. You bastard! To the kitchen, quick! We ran over to the kitchen, hearing that monster's laugh follow us once we were in. We could still see through the windows, into the toy maker's little factory. Now I was desperately sure it wasn't a nightmare. The terror overwhelmed me, and Daisy's blood on my fingertips was more real than anything else I have felt. I turned around. Where's Dad? My mother grabbed a knife and got closer to me holding me tightly in her arms. Stephen! With her trembling voice, she called him. But we sighed with relief when we saw him coming in the kitchen. Hurry up before- My mother's voice quavered and stopped. Just like me, she stared at Dad's pale face. He walked slowly, with a fixed look on his face and his eyes wide open. Suddenly he fell on the floor, and behind him appeared Jason's frozen smile. The toy maker looked at him with crazed eyes. It looks like Dad's battery is running low. It should probably be recharged. Jason revealed a giant mechanical key and drove it into my father's back already stained with blood. He turned it with force and twisted my father's backbone. At the second turn, I shouted, covering my ears to block out the sounds of the breaking bones. But I couldn't drag my eyes away from my father's body contorting itself like a snake. Go away! Be gone! Leave my child alone! My mother held me tight at her chest, and despite the terror and tears she shed, her face resembled one of those lionesses shielding her cub. Silence, woman! It's not you I want to talk to, growled the furious toy maker, and in the end, he pointed his white claw 
at me. Come with me, my sweet friend. We'll have fun together. We'll be back to laughing like we used to. No. You're just an insane psychopath. I don't know what kind of monster you are. I really don't have any idea how you could exist in this world. But one thing is for sure. You must disappear forever from my life. At the sound of my refusal, Jason's face clouded over and his eyes sparkled with fury. He started to rage, to contort himself and jerking his head as if he went into the brink of insanity because of me. I don't understand, he growled quietly. I don't understand, he screamed, grinding his teeth, his face becoming more terrifying. I was the only one who stayed by your side when your parents preferred work than staying with you. I was a loyal friend, while the ones surrounding you only looked for you when they needed it. He came closer. I gave you all my attention, giving you loads of toys, and never made you lacking of nothing. I always aimed for your own good, and that's why I destroyed everything hurting you. His screams were so loud that they resonated over the walls, while my body shook in horror at every word. I got rid of all the people that saddened you, because I wanted you to be happy by my side. And after I looked for you for so long, you even forgot me. I was a true friend, but you turned your back on me. Suddenly his furious face relaxed, but not his previous insane smile. After doing everything for you, there isn't another explanation. There really is something wrong with you. He instilled it upon me with an accusatory look. You really were a very bad little girl. So I have to fix you up. What? I trembled with my voice. You heard me well, you little ungrateful. I will fix you up so you'll be good, he sniggered. You'll become a very beautiful toy doll. My mother, who was paralysed by Jason's tirade, suddenly awoke and pointed the knife over him. If you ever dare touch Maggie, I swear I'll kill you. Jason looked at my mother with a challenging gaze and slowly came closer. The knife was trembling in my mother's hand while the toy maker gave an inexpressive guise. She couldn't stand the tension anymore. She pushed me behind her and hurled herself at him. My mother stabbed him in the heart and the monster opened his eyes wide. He made a contortion of pain, corrugating his dark eyebrows, and my mother smiled triumphant. Just kidding. In that moment, a smirk reappeared on Jason's face. He opened his arms with nonchalance, without even taking out the knife from his chest. My mother was shocked and stood still for a few seconds, but she was possessed by exasperation and started stabbing him several times, trying desperately to make him react somehow. The disgusting sound of flesh being pierced by the knife could be heard clearly while the shirt was ripping, but Jason kept his balance perfectly. That's enough now, he commented in a bored tone. Then he hit my mother in the face, making her fall violently to the floor. I'll be in trouble if you scratch it. I was quickly next to my mother, helping her get to her knees. The side of her face was already swollen. My eyes leaped to the toy maker, 
I was waiting for his immediate revenge, but I was petrified when I glimpsed what he was doing. He unbuttoned his shirt and drove his nails into his chest, close enough to the injuries he got from the knife. He sank his claws into his flesh and slowly started pulling on the opposite direction. The wound appeared as a little rip in the centre, which enlarged as his flesh shredded like paper. A thick black liquid dripped to the floor. It was not blood. Even if it was, then it must have been something rotten. Something sparkled in his exposed ribcage. You probably forgot how much I care for my splendid music box. But luckily, everything is alright. He took his hands off his exposed chest and covered the hole with his shirt, hiding the music box that started to play from the inside. He then came closer. I wanted to scream. I wanted to beg. But the horror of what I had witnessed left me completely paralysed to do anything, which implied squeezing up with my mother. It only took a yank from the toy maker to tear her out of my arms. He took her up without any effort and pulled her close to his chest to prevent her from wriggling away from him. He clenched his arm around her neck, while the other arm blocked the hand that stabbed him. Now I'll show you what happens to those whom try to hinder me. Mum. He slowly bent her arm in the opposite direction. She cried from pain, trying to set herself free. But the monster was strong enough to bend her limb and make her bone come out. My mother sank her nails into his blackened flesh, which flaked apart, producing a nauseating smell. But she could not set herself free, since his grip was wrapped tightly. All right, I'll come with you, I shouted with all the voice I had in my body. Jason raised his stare and gave me a serious look. My mother was becoming pale due to the pain and the blood loss. She needed my help, but there's nothing I could do but hand myself in to the toy maker. You can take me with you, but leave my mother alone, I said with my trembling voice. After all, we're friends, right? I tried to make a convincing smile, despite that I was trembling from head to toe, and my eyes were filled with tears. Jason smirked. He was outright satisfied and pleased with his victory. Excellent choice, Maggie. At that moment, his arms took back their usual colour. His lacerations healed over in just a few seconds, and he was back to his usual appearance. His face returned to its normal state, but I already knew what was concealed behind those amber-coloured eyes. It seems Jason accepted my surrender, but before leaving my mother, he took out of his pocket a little red mouse. It was unmistakably a toy, one of those with a big winding key. He grabbed my mother by the jaw and pushed it into her mouth. What's wrong, Mum? Did the mouse take your tongue? He laughed, amused, pushing her away from himself. In a nick of time, I saw my mother, eyes wide open and frightened. A light. Then an explosion. She fell to her knees, her jaw, her nose and her eyes 
beat into a bloody pulp. She fell to the ground, a stain of blood pooling around her crumpled body. Blood and pieces of flesh spurted on me, but I was paralysed in front of my mother's corpse, while Jason didn't stop laughing. Why did you do that? The toy maker's overwhelming shadow covered me, and he bent down to me, his face getting closer, which was spoiled by a rift on his flesh, wrought by the club. Because I'm not your friend anymore, you little shit. Now, I'm your creator. He then grabbed me by my arm and dragged me towards him. Now, let me fix you up. Sally what? Frank asked. She had a nightmare, a very bad one. She said, he touched her. Well, who the hell is he? I don't know, Frank. But it was only a nightmare. I just wanted to inform you of what's been going on with her, and why she's been acting different. Johnny furrowed his brow in anger, his knuckles turning white, then calmed down quickly, thinking fast. He put on a smile and walked into the room, making it look like he just walked into their conversation.